this session is with Chad Dibdahl of Adobe, making an experience word to chatbot in under an hour. Learning Data Live is brought to you by Scriptorium, the content strategy experts. Since 1997, Scriptorium has helped companies manage, structure, organize, and distribute content in an efficient way. If you were trying to figure out how the data content model will best fit your content, or you need help configuring data tools, please contact us. We'd love to work with you. LearningData.com and Learning Data Live would not be possible without the help from our sponsors. And we very much appreciate their help. During the event, attendees are muted, but we still want to hear from you. If you would take a moment to locate the questions module and the GoToWebinar interface, type your questions and comments in there, and we will watch for those and share them with the presenter at the end of the session to get those questions answered. In addition, we will drop some links into the questions module one is to a survey where we want to get your feedback on all the sessions. Please do fill those out because we want your feedback on how well this event is going. So I am going to hand it over to Chad. Chad, are you there? I certainly am, Alan. Good morning. Good morning to you as well. And let me hand over presenting ability to you so you can start showing your slides. Thank you. There you go. All right. Great, I see him. Wonderful. All right, thanks again. Sure. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Um, as Alan mentioned, my name is Chad Dibdahl. I'm a solutions consultant with Adobe Technical Communications. And uh, what I want to talk about over the course of over the next 45 minutes or so, is you know, how can I take um, unstructured content um, in perhaps Microsoft Word format um, and really make that structured and, and uh, get value out of it uh, in a way that's simply not possible in, a, in an unstructured environment. Right? So the example we'll look at today is going to be the idea of taking an unstructured Word document, importing that into a system that will transform it to uh, data content, and we'll see some examples of that. And then finally, we'll be taking a look at how we can actually deliver this content in some new and, and interesting ways, um, using uh, what we call content as a service or a headless CMS use case. Um, so uh, with that in mind, let's forge ahead and we'll take a look at um, what we're going to be thinking about and what actually makes good food for chatbots. So um, many of you probably have interacted with chatbots um, in your daily life. You know, if you have um, you know, a support problem with your internet provider or something along those lines, you might have interacted with a, a, a chatbot. And uh, really the, the idea being, I want to have a you know, bite-sized kind of chunk uh, that's going to be an answer for a question that my audience may be asking. Um, so really, when we're thinking about small, bite-sized chunks of information, we're thinking about structured content. And then we're also thinking about enriching that content um, with relevant keywords and taxonomies that are going to help me find the relevant content and surface that more easily for uh, my audience, right? And that sounds a lot like data. And if you were attending the previous session, you learned about all the intro, introductory information about data. And so what is it, right? Why, why do organizations use it? And this is maybe um, the next generation of how data content is going to be used in the enterprise, right? Taking content that I'm already creating to produce uh, perhaps online help or a PDF-based manual, take that content and be able to repurpose it from that single source of truth into um, new and interesting applications such as a chatbot, um, mobile apps, et cetera. So phase one, if I've got data content already, or maybe 
as we'll see, Word content that I want to go ahead and leverage in this way, let's use that content, right? I might have a chunk of content that is a relevant answer to a question. It may not be the best user experience, but it might be phase one, where we want to go ahead and start. And for phase two, and the, you know, looking to the future, we might want to take this content and, uh, because we are doing multi-channel delivery, tag different chunks of content for uh, different deliverable types, including the chatbot. Right? I might not want to display images in the context of a chatbot. There might be more detailed information in my user guide, for example. So I might want to be able to um, tailor the content based on the audience uh, that I am, uh, and audience and, and by the way, delivery channel uh, that I'm actually delivering the content to. Um, so I might have uh, some attributes or conditional, um, conditional processing that's going to determine what content goes to the chatbot versus uh, what makes it into, uh, for, for example, my user manual or online help. So what are we going to be looking at here today? Um, I am from Adobe, so I'm going to be showing you our XML documentation for Adobe Experience Manager, and that's a full end-to-end -end DITA CCMS um, that um, we are uh, going to be taking a look at in terms of importing the content. Um, that's where all the content gets managed, and it's also what's serving the content to uh, our chatbot in today's example. So we'll see um, by virtue of having content within this system, uh, we'll be able to go ahead and surface that in a number of different ways, including uh, via a chat application. And so that's what I'm talking about when, I'm, when I mention a headless CMS, right? Um, traditionally, a CMS might be used uh, to deliver a website, right? Or to, uh, you know, and if you're doing DITA, it's gonna be a PDF, and online help, et cetera, right? What we want to do is extend that concept to take this single source of truth, the content you're already creating, um, to, to generate those, uh, those deliverables and be able to um, query that information. I want to ask it a question. I want to grab the most relevant result and I want to uh, display that to my user as an answer. All right. We'll also be taking a look at, uh, we're talking about our toolbox here, of course. Um, we'll take a look at how we're actually going to do that querying activity. How do I take input from a user, ask my repository, my single source of truth, a question, get a good answer back, and then ultimately display it to the user within that chat application. Um, so this node red piece, and we'll take a look at what that looks like um, in a moment, uh, is actually going to be the piece that ties everything together for us. But it could be um, you know, a, a commercial chatbot application or what have you. I've just used what I have available and what I, what I know, actually. This is a, a tool used in home automation, which happens to be uh, one of the hobbies I have that annoys my wife. Um, so in that context, it's if I walk into a room, a light turns on. If I leave for, or am not moving in that room for another 15 minutes, the light turns off. Um, in our case, what, what we're going to do is if I ask a question, what relevant content do I have uh, that's going to answer that question for my user? Um, so really just a, a means of, of tying everything together and, and making it an experience for the user. And then finally, uh, in our example today, I'll use a chat application called Telegram. Uh, it doesn't have to be uh, Telegram, it's just a sample. So again, uh, using what I know, um, but we could use other uh, chat applications such as WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, Slack, and you can build your own custom apps to uh, interact with this repository because we are using open APIs uh, to serve this content. So what is this going to look like? So. I mentioned we're going to start with an unstructured Microsoft Word document, look a little bit like what we've got here on this slide, and that's going to have some perhaps frequently asked questions in it. You may have documents like this um, available to you already today um, in your organization. Pretty common uh, use case to have frequently asked questions available. And each question then becomes an answer uh, in the form of a data topic. So for how do I open account, I might have some keywords uh, that I want to incorporate there. 
um, it's going to help enhance my search experience, and uh, I'm going to have an answer. So how do I open an account? Well, existing customers can do that online, right? New customers can open a, an account by stopping into the local branch because we want to see your ID, for example, or whatever the case might be. So every question, every topic becomes an answer as well. So we're going to have these question and answer pairs um, in our uh, single source of truth, in our DITA content, uh, but it's not DITA yet, right? We're still in the Microsoft Word world. So uh, what will we do? Uh, what will we do to get that into a structured environment where I'll be able to use it in uh, this kind of um, headless or you know, kind of chatbot application that we're discussing? My answer, and uh, the answer I think most of the panelists would give you, is we should convert it to DITA, right? So I'm going to go ahead and take that Word document that I just showed you. I'm going to upload that into Adobe Experience Manager, on which we've also installed our XML documentation add-on. And that transforms Adobe Experience Manager into a full end-to-end -end, uh, DITA CCMS, or Component Content Management System. Uh, it takes that Word content, and we can also, uh, uh, by the way, incorporate HTML content, uh, InDesign content, uh, unstructured, um, HT, I already said HTML, but uh, we can also do uh, other XML flavors uh, and unstructured frame maker as well. So we have a number of different facilities to import uh, content. So I could just as easily have done a, uh, a demonstration for you today about taking uh, InDesign content and transforming that into chatbot food and having that application run. Um, I just happened to choose Word uh, because that's uh, what I had available to show. Um, but we're going to actually take that content, regardless of the source format, all of the ones I mentioned are supported, and transform that into uh, DITA XML um, using a set of predefined rules, uh, essentially taking styles in Word and transforming those into DITA elements. So the next step we're going to have the data content now that we've migrated. So we've got a question, an answer, and a topic. All one thing, right? How do I reset my password? Here's how to reset your password. Right? We have a procedure here that's going to allow you to um, go to the uh, go to the website, reset your password, etc. So how do I get those answers? Well, we're going to see that in just a moment by querying the repository, wiring it up uh, in this application called uh, Node-RED, as I mentioned, frequently used for home automation. Um, this might look a little um, confusing. There's a lot of lines going all over the place here, but just to uh, tell you and explain a little bit briefly about what's going to be happening here, um, we're going to take input from our, oops, apologies there, a little clicky on you. Um, so we're going to take input from this chat application called Telegram, and that's going to result in input into the system, right? So I'm going to grab that text. I'm going to do some thinking about it. So uh, there may be some, uh, if it is a, a specific type of uh, request, uh, there may be a canned answer I want to send it outside of the uh, system. But essentially what I'm doing is I'm going to take that input send it as a query to my content repository. I'm then going to get back a, uh, a path for my top result. And then I'm going to transform that into a response that I can deliver ultimately back to my chat application here. I think the next slide is maybe just a little bit more detail about that. Um, and actually, I should have used this. It was larger. I apologize. So we're going to receive that question uh, from the user, right? Uh, we're going to go look through, kind of rummage through everything in our uh, in our content repository and find the best answer that matches the question that they've asked. And then we're going to transform that XML. So we're going to work natively on the data, transform that to uh, a format that the uh, Telegram, in this case, chat application can consume and deliver that back as an answer to our user. And then finally, 
um, this is what the eventual experience is going to look like. So uh, I may have forgotten my password. I'm going to ask about that, and we'll see uh, see here the different types of answers that the um, uh, that the chatbot is able to provide. And apparently, we have a very forgetful user here who uh, really really wants to know how to open an account uh, twice as much as they might normally need to. So that's sort of the general flow of what we'll take a look at uh, over the course of the next uh, 15, 20 minutes. And uh, at the end, we'll have a nice working chat bot. You know, maybe we'll teach it some new things along the way, um, but let's get out of our slideshow and into our Word document. And this looks a little bit different than the one I showed you the screenshot of previously. Now I've kind of updated uh, the way I'm doing these things um, fairly recently. So you can see I do have a set of what I'm calling global frequently asked questions here. So I do have kind of an accounts section here and these are all tagged up based on styles in Word, right? So um, if you're using Word or have ever used Word, which I would imagine 100% of you have, um, we're going to have headings that are going to be essentially um, headings in our resulting data map. Every heading two is going to turn into a topic and therefore an answer to one of our questions. And I'm also going to have um, a number of other things. So for example, my orange text here, and I made it orange just for uh, the sake of illustration, that's going to become a short description in my topic, for example, and so on. So not a huge document um, because I'm doing a live demonstration. I, uh, I kept it small uh, so that we don't have to wait for it to process, although it happens very quickly. Uh, but this is going to be our starting point uh, for the content that we'll create as food for our chatbot. I'm just gonna close that up. And what we're looking at now is actually um, Adobe Experience Manager and we're going to be using some features enabled by uh, our XML add-on for that, which again, transforms this platform into an end-to-end -end, uh, data CCMS, including um, obviously content import, um, content authoring and creation uh, using a, a web-based XML uh, editor uh, that we'll see briefly in a moment. Um, be able to go ahead and publish that to multiple channels, including uh, being able to host it as uh, food for the chatbot application we're going to take a look at uh, here in just a moment. So within um, AEM, I have this uh, Word files. You can see I've got folders here, uh, but I have this Word file, files folder into which I am just going to drag my global FAQs Word document. I took that from my other screen. And once I do that, uh, because of the way I had set up my styles and set up some business rules uh, that are gonna map those styles to DITA. Uh, if I go to an additional folder here called W2D or Word to DITA, uh, that will now have become DITA content and therefore delicious, delicious chatbot food. And if we go ahead and take a look, I might wanna open up my map and I can see I do have uh, two kind of categories of content here in this case, um, one about accounts, one about kind of standard interactions. So this is what my bot will say uh, when I say hello to it, for example. And you can see, um, I might want to see what it looks like to open account. Uh, so I have opening an account. Um, I have an additional search title here, which is going to help me um, answer a question, right? Opening account, an account is an unlikely question, so we want to make sure we have alternates in there. Um, that can be done via search title and keywords, for example, to really enrich uh, the search results. And uh, so we can go ahead and really take this content and have it become food for our chatbot very easily. So really, just to recap, and that was pretty pretty quick, but uh, we've taken unstructured content, we've uploaded that unstructured content into a special watched folder here within my CCMS. It's transformed that content uh, very rapidly uh, to data compliant content that I can now use as um, food for my chatbot. Now I did cheat a little bit 
Um, so this particular um, upload, I'm not going to use that. I have it already existing here in this chatbot folder in my repository. So I do have a special location uh, where I keep this stuff. Um, but you can see we do have the same uh, types of content here. How do I reset my password? What is my loan payoff amount? And so forth. Let's just go take one more look at that at my global FAQs. And you can see uh, this particular map uh, only has the um, normal FAQs, the account-based ones, but the topics are still there, so we can go ahead and query against them. And you might also notice this one's set up a little bit differently, right? I have different keywords here in my short description um, and so forth. So I can do a number of different things to enrich these, uh, this content to deliver great search results. So talking here a little bit about the next piece in the tool chain, right? Uh, this is that um, flow that we looked at a little bit earlier, and it's going to do what we were talking about, right? It's going to take the input, do a bunch of stuff to it, and ultimately uh, send some content out here uh, to our Telegram application. And we'll be able to see those inquiries coming in here in my, uh, in my right panel in real time uh, while I do that. So let's talk about, we'll ask it, how do I open an account um, and uh, see what happens. So I'll bring up my chat application there. And again, this could be any chat application. It may be a, uh, uh, you know, a custom built application that you have, uh, have built to, to leverage this content. It could be a commercial chat bot application. It could be something like Slack, right? There's support for bots on a variety of chat platforms. Uh, but for now, let's be friendly. Let's just say hello. And we can see here in real time that I am getting, you know, first of all, it's capturing the, uh, the input that I'm sending it. Um, there's a whole bunch of other things here that it's not showing, but it's showing essentially input and output. And you can see here, I've been greeted by my chatbot. It's introducing itself as Hal, and uh, it's an automated chatbot and wants to know how it can help. And maybe, maybe I forgot my password. Hal very helpfully uh, goes ahead, searches the repository, and finds some information for me about how I can reset my password. Um, so, and you can see that happens very quickly. Um, what I'm doing here is actually transforming that uh, XML content living in the repository and um, actually transforming into this case to Markdown, uh, which, the, uh, which the chat application can use. So what happens if we want to add maybe um, maybe some steps to this, right? Perhaps we're introducing um, we're introducing two-factor authentication, for example, um, and we want to uh, go ahead and document what that looks like. So let's go back to our account, and I'm going to go to our how do I reset my password topic, and here, for, for example, perhaps I want to no longer answer the security questions, or maybe add, let's add an additional step. So I'm just going to add a new step and say, maybe I'm just adding a new step about um, uh, introducing two-factor authentication to the, uh, to the process here. I'm just going to go ahead and save that. And once I have done so, I want to go ahead and ask again. I'm very forgetful. I forgot my password again. And now I have some more information here, right? So in real time, I'm updating this content and being able to push that out to my audience if that's what I desire, right? Oftentimes we would want to see an approval process before this content actually go live, uh, goes live rather, uh, but that would make for a fairly boring demonstration. Uh, so we can go ahead and do this uh, live. You know, other things are, you know, that was a pretty small Word document, right? Um, so I might want to know, um, you know, what is a certificate of deposit? Well, this is a, 
a chat bot that doesn't know anything about that yet, right? So perhaps we want to go ahead and very quickly create a new answer. So uh, let's ask or go ahead and create a quick topic. We'll make it a concept topic. So I can actually enrich this content uh, by creating content directly within the system as well. I don't have to import it. Uh, that's just one way of getting content into the system. Obviously, we can go ahead and create content from scratch as well. So perhaps here, And I can go ahead and correct my spelling, obviously. Um, and perhaps I want to add a keyword. And let's save our new topic. And so now we've actually taught our chatbot something new. If we go back, let's bring up Node Red so we can see what's happening live. We'll just clear that out. So we'll see that really in real time, I can go ahead and um, find the information that I need, create new content, push that out to the repository uh, very quickly and make it available as a service to, um, to any, one of, uh, any one of a number of potential applications. Right? So um, I might also want to, you know, how do I close my account? We can have uh, some additional information here as well. And, uh, and so uh, the other thing I might say is goodbye, so we can have more of a human interaction uh, with these guys also. Maybe, who are you? If I'm curious, uh, we can go ahead and have a, have a kind of jokey response uh, to who are you as well. So, with that, unfortunately, I am all out of things to show you. Um, I didn't realize how quickly I was going to be able to get through all of this. I usually get a lot of questions during these things, so uh, I guess I hadn't um, hadn't anticipated going so fast. But I guess, uh, Alan, we can open up the floor for questions. Absolutely, and that's the idea. We want to let you to do your thing, and then we will um, want to take back control and then we'll get started. I'm going to also introduce my colleague Elizabeth Patterson. She is going to help with the questions. Elizabeth, are you there? I am. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. So what are some of the questions Chad's been getting? Okay, um, well I have one here and it says uh, when a person submits a request to a chatbot screen but the request has typos, how good is the chatbot at making suggestions? That's a great question. It all depends on the way you've set up the, the algorithm, right? So what we're really talking about is a f essentially uh, called the fuzzy match, right? So uh, I want to go ahead and be able to um, get the right result, even though the input might not be ideal, right? So um, that's the uh, kind of uh, in your search algorithm, um, depending on how you're setting up your chatbot in your search algorithm, you're gonna to wanna to set up fuzzy matches, uh, which is going to go ahead and facilitate uh, exactly that type uh, of scenario. Okay, thank you. Um, if anyone else has any questions, you can go ahead and drop those into the questions module now. So please do that. And I am also going to drop in a link to the survey for feedback on this session, please open up that link and fill it out at your convenience. Any other questions? I am not seeing any other questions. Well, yep, they're coming through now real quickly. It usually does. <laughs> okay, the first, the next one. Uh, Are there specific chat bots that work best with Ditto? 
Um, so there's a wide range of commercially available uh, chatbots. Um, I'm not hit really in a position to make recommendations on those. Uh, none of them are Adobe products. Um, but generally speaking, uh, if you want to use Dita natively, uh, there, there would be you know, certainly a, a way to do that. Otherwise, uh, what you might do is transform your Dita to something like JSON, and really any chatbot uh, would be able to consume that. Um, another question, what DITA OT transformation is used to convert Word to DITA? Uh, that is a, uh, a plugin uh, from the excellent DITA for Publishers uh, project. Um, it's, I believe the transform is called, oddly enough, Word to DITA. Okay, great. Here's one, another one. Um, with chatbots, it looks like you have to build the decision tree, but how can you automate this over thousands of topics? Um, so I didn't really build out a decision tree. It was more of a, a way to automate essentially the querying of the search index uh, with, within the, the repository. So um, that's, that's the, generally the way it would, would work, and you're talking about then um, things like natural language uh, processing and, and, and things along those lines um, to really automate the retrieval of this content based on the input you're getting. Thank you. Um, are specializations being supported in Word to Ditto? Um, well, I've never, well, learning and training specialization is supported. Um, I have never tried uh, going from Word to specialized DITA. I imagine it would be possible, but would be probably some legwork up front to uh, get it working. All right. Um, In regard to cost of tools, I would recommend that you run through our calculator. We have an XML calculator on our website that will help you figure out your cost savings. That could, good, could then uh, pay for tools. We're getting questions about tool costs, and I want to avoid those because that's a very, very subjective thing, and it's, and it's very unfair to you to provide a quotation on the fly, if you will. <laughs> yeah, so, I'm not, I'm not going to do that, but if yeah. you are interested, please do feel free to reach out. Um, I'm very easy to get a hold of. Yes, and and we just posted a link uh, our, to our link to our email experts at learningdita.com. You can send questions there, um, and we can forward things to uh, Chad as well, and he can point you to the right people in regard to two costs. Because it, and I speak for all vendors, it's very difficult for people to give on the fly quotations in these kinds of settings. All right, I'm not seeing any more questions. So if you have any more, feel free to drop them in to the questions module now. Otherwise, you're welcome to email us at experts at learningdata.com. Chad, thank you so much for your time. This was really interesting and we will forward any questions your way. Sounds great. Thank you very much, Alan, and everyone on the, uh, on the presentation. Appreciate it.